Hey everybody, Gina DeLuca here. Okay, I'm gonna be trying something a little different today. Um, I am uh, mixing my paints like I'm doing a cloud pour, uh, but I'm going to be doing a ribbon technique just to see what happens with that. Uh, with uh, one of the paints being a cell maker using the Deco Art Americana Decor satin enamel in pure white. So what I have done, the colors that I have here is a combination of Liquitex Basics Thalo Blue, Thalo Green, and a touch of uh, Liquitex Titanium White. Um, I just have that in a jar because my other jar broke, so no point in showing you that. Uh, so that's all this is. This is this is just the blue and the green. Um, this is the uh, white. This is the uh, satin enamel white, titanium white, and then some of this color added to it. So the way that I mix uh, the satin enamels to become a cell maker. And I can add this to any color. It doesn't have to be white. I can add this to any color. Yes, it's going to make it a lighter color, but it's also going to turn it into a cell maker if I use half this and half another color. So, um, that's all this is. This was um, the satin enamel white and the titanium white with just a drop of this darker color added to it so that it's not a white paint. It has a slight tint to it. These paints have been mixed one part paint to two parts Floetrol. And that mixture is then thinned with my concoction of 90% water and 10% Floetrol until I get the consistency that I'm looking for, which is, this is about a two on my consistency scale it is making a mound, but it disappears quickly. It is making a nice, thin, even stream off of my stick. You don't see it getting thinner and thicker. It should be a nice, even stream. If it is not even, then you need to mix more. Before we get started, have you seen the Fluid Art Inspiration cards? If you have, you can fast forward about a minute, but if you have not, what we have are 52 cards. There are 42 technique cards, and each technique card has an associated video here on YouTube that gives you all of the information that you need. The exact paint brand, color, consistency, the recipe, of course, how to do the technique. This is the picture of the painting in that video. This box here contains a tip for that particular technique and here at the bottom you have the color palette that was used in that painting and then these two boxes can be used together as the basis of a two color palette or you can build off of those colors there are eight bonus color palette cards each one has five color palettes you can use all of the colors or just some of the colors mix and match the bonus color palette cards with the technique cards and you have more combinations than you could ever paint in a lifetime these are available at my website, ginadeluca.net, and also at amazon.com. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is put some of this background color into my cup. I will be adding more. And also, this does not have any cell maker in it, so this is going to be a background color too. I kind of want that those colors to blend for a background. I'm going to lay down a base coat. My life is just easier when I do. So I know a lot of people don't do the base coats. I have no luck when I don't use one. I've already covered my edges. Uh, the way that I mix for a straight pour um, because I and also because I'm using Floetrol. Sometimes you don't get the greatest coverage on the sides. Your canvas can show through if it is not good coverage on the sides. So 
I like to cover my edge before I even get started so I don't have to come back and do it later, especially difficult when you are using custom blended colors like this is. So my base coat is down, and now I'm going to add this darker paint, and I want that to blend in. I'm going to kind of mix it around a little bit. Okay, and here comes my cell maker. Always check your consistency before adding it to the cup. The sauce may thicken upon standing, pouring from up high so it blends and churns. Okay, and then I'm going to take a bit of what is left in my cup here and just go over top of the paints that did not sink. So the idea behind these cells, there are two ways to get cells without silicone. One is the Rayleigh Taylor instability, which is based on the specific gravity of your paints that the heavier paints will sink. And then there is the hydrophobic effect, which is what this is. So the Deco art paints are matte. I'm going to pop these bubbles real quick so they don't come up through my pour. A good reason to use a base coat that is the, you know, a color that uh, is in your painting is if the bubbles do come up and bring paint with it, it doesn't stand out in a bad way. Let me grab this piece of schmutz. And I have to remember that I forgot to put on a bandana and I look like a swamp witch today. Uh, <laughs> make sure my hair does not end up on this. It's, it's, it's sticking straight up. It's pretty funny looking. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, um, use the color that is in your painting for best results. Uh, so I'm going to just do a ribbon, just back and forth. This is going to be a lot of paint, but you kind of have to sacrifice some paint for the effect. A lot of this will be getting tilted off. Okay, popping the bubbles. So in regards to the hydrophobic effect, the DecoArt paints are matte. The Liquitex Basics are glossier than the satin enamels doesn't have to be a glossy paint. It just needs to be more glossy than the satin enamels. So as these satin enamels pop up, um, but part of what happens is there are bubbles in there. And as the bubbles come up, it brings paint with it. 
uh, and that's why you want to use a base coat that is in your, in your painting uh, so that it fits if you do get those bubbles. But you'll notice as they pop up, they expand because it is pushing away the Liquitex paints. And it, it's expanding and it's pushing them away. So as I let these sit, they'll get bigger. And then when I tilt them, they'll get even bigger. That is the beauty of a straight pour. A cloud pour is basically a straight pour uh, using satin enamels, but it is um, the, the mixing aspect of it is a bit different because you can't just mix the satin enamels straight. You have to mix them with something else um, or they can crack. So this is not where this painting is going to be drying because I have to do another painting right after this. So it's kind of leaning this way. It is leveled to the other side of the table. For those who ask, why can't I just level this table? This is actually three folding tables put together with some MDF on top. But these folding tables, they they don't fold flat. They have like a little bit of a pitch in the center. And so it makes it just impossible to level the whole thing. Uh, it's very frustrating. I need to get something very heavy duty uh, piece of MDF, which is going to require someone with a truck and, uh, and a kind heart. <laughs> to help me carry something that size. Okay. So, as I stretch these out, they will um, kind of start to look puffier. Uh, so, still, every time I pop these bubbles, there's more white coming up. The bubbles keep coming to the top and I just keep popping them. So it is very important to be patient when it comes to a straight pour. Um, you will get the best results if you are patient. Allow that paint puddle to percolate. Allow those cells to develop. I know it can be excruciating, but uh, that is how you get the best results here. Okay. I do want to make sure that I keep some of that there just because it's different. It breaks up what's happening. So when I tilt this off, I do want to be mindful of that. Mm, you know, I almost want to spin this, but now why am I doing this? This is actually a test piece. Um, I want to. really uh, get control of, of these satin enamel paints um, for use as clouds and landscapes. So trying to figure out 
exactly how to get the effects that I'm going for. Trying to find the weight of my paint so I can use that to push my paint around. I'm probably going to lose some of those lines there. It is what it is. Okay, and I don't love what's happening right there, so I want to straighten that out. I might just have to help it along a bit here. Come on, baby. corner is stubborn. Okay. Now. I'm trying to recenter the weight of my paint again. The weight of your paint is going to be where it's moving the fastest, and if you can control that, you can really control your tilt. Okay, going to lose some of what's happening here at the bottom. I'm trying to do this so you can see what's happening. Stretching these cells is what is going to give it that very cool 3D effect. That's why you want to wait for them to develop before you start tilting and stretching. And I just want to tidy up this corner a little bit, the side. There's a bit of a stretch to it that I don't like. Okay, that should do it. Okay, I think that is going to be it for this one. I'm not sure if the ribbon technique is the technique that I want to be using for what I have in mind for this landscape. I will think on that more and try something else but in the meantime this is what a ribbon pour looks like with a cloud pour mix um, I'm going to let this sit and if any more cells develop uh, they may and we will see what happens I'll bring you in for a close-up back in a few Okay, here it is. This is actually dried, and I did get a little bit of crackling um, in that uh, satin enamel. 
I don't usually get that. Um, Typically, I don't torch after I tilt, and I think I may have torched after I tilted. Um, so, uh, that could be what that's from. But, let's pull this out a little bit. So, as far as using it for, you know, the these clouds that I have in my mind, I'm not sure if it's the, gonna be the right technique for that. Um, I, I kind of wanted this gradient with the background, but I didn't really get that. So I'm gonna have to work on that a little bit more and, and figure out how to make that happen. Probably maybe just a moving straight pour instead of like a ribbon style. Anywho, there it is. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed. Please do like, share, and subscribe and all that good stuff. If you are subscribed, make sure you've clicked that bell so you get your notifications every time I put up an upload. Um, only 7% of my subscribers are receiving notifications, so make sure you click that bell. Uh, check out the description box below for links to my PayPal tip jar if you feel so inclined. Uh, my Patreon, join us there. Uh, we have weekly Zooms, there's a private Facebook group, um, and of course, uh, exclusive content that you won't be finding here on the YouTube. Um, learning how to sketch, how to do a splash, step by step, full, full speed, regular speed tutorial. Um, but uh, yes, so uh, check out the Patreon. Check out my website, GinaDeLuca.net, where you can find my art and music and the Fluid Art Inspiration Cards for sale. And you can also find in the description box links to uh, my affiliates. My affiliate links and coupon codes are down there. If you use those links or codes, I receive a small commission at no additional cost to you. Anything that you buy off of those sites. And last but certainly not least... Uh, You'll find the link to our Facebook group. Go make some art. Join us there. Post your masterpieces. Ask your questions. Get some inspiration. Good times had by most. And uh, coming up immediately after this video is a trailer for the Fluid Art Experience uh, happening in April in Seattle. Uh, lots of artists getting together to teach you uh, their special tips and tricks and, and how they do what they do. So uh, stay tuned for that trailer more information or check out uh, fluidartexperience.com. Okay, that is it for me for today. I hope you all have a beautiful day. Now go make some art.